Hi, this is Robert Clinky Beard with the Commercial Landscaper Podcast. We're going to take 20 minutes to deliver some amazing content from accomplished leaders and business owners to provide you with some value to scale your business and to become a better leader and push yourself out of your comfort zone. We encourage you to like and share with everyone to spread our messages. I'm super excited to announce our new partnership with Weathermatic. For most landscape companies, irrigation is an untapped goldmine for growth and profit, but labor and process problems stand in the way. So Weathermatic has created a partnership to package mobile technology and software with proven business solutions to tackle the perennial irrigation challenges and take your operations to a whole new level. I encourage you to reach out to Weathermatic and learn more. Cheers, everyone. Hi, this is Robert Clicky Bear with the Commercial Landscaper Podcast. I'm really excited today to be joined by Alan Sweeney. Alan, uh, thank you for joining the show today. Thanks for having us, Robert. Glad to be here. No problem. We actually saw each other last week up in Vegas. It was it was all business, all business in Vegas last week. Very few people know who Alan Sweeney is. I have listeners all around the world, actually. And I'd love to just hear a little bit about your story, how you got into the business. Yeah, no, absolutely. Appreciate it. First, for your time today. Uh, it's an honor to be here with you. But uh, yes, so I am Alan Sweeney. I'm the founder and CEO of AFIX. We are a commercial grounds maintenance company, primarily serving the Southeast. Didn't start there though. You know, like uh, probably many landscapers, I actually, I guess my story started in high school, started the business in high school, co-op my senior year. So basically left school around noon and uh, began working for myself. But uh, if you fast forward, you know, through the years, we evolved from the company that did a little bit of everything for everybody to a, a very focused commercial landscape maintenance company. But today we've got four branches, uh, Kentucky being two of them, Louisville, Lexington, and then one in Chattanooga, one in Knoxville, you know, 350 employees peak season. But the last few years, we've had some some pretty good growth. So we're running, you know, close to 30 million today, but it really goes back to our team. we got a really good team that have helped to drive growth in the last few years and our culture is something we're proud of. It's been a fun journey to this point so far. No, that's awesome. I mean, 30 million and, you know, you're, you're young. I mean, how, how old are you, Alan? I'm 37. Wow. Yeah. Very impressive. Very impressive. And now, when you when you think, I don't want to take you too far back, but when you left school and you started probably doing some landscaping on the side, maybe, I don't know, cutting yards, did you have any thoughts at all about being, you know, so many years later doing 30 million? Everybody dreams. And, and you know, I guess sometimes maybe at a young age, you don't have the vision to fulfill the dream. And so, you know, it's been neat as we've grown. I mean, I can think of of milestones along the way, you know, one of them, in 2011, we actually started in Boss Software before going to Aspire. And, you know, just through some consulting with people in the industry and then the Boss Software helping us realize at that time, you know, residential was 20% of our revenue, 80% of our customers. So we realized, hey, we're, we're out of the residential game. Let's go in the commercial game. And then, you know, as you start to see things, you start to realize that from where you started in high school, it was a means to an end to whether you wanted to, to buy a car or maybe your first house or different things like that. But you realize this is a career industry. And so certainly has changed since the high school days. I don't I don't think I saw it then, but I think certainly in the last five, seven years, we've really seen. And, and when you think of the industry and the outside influences today, you know, it helps you realize like there is a lot of opportunity in this space. And I think, you know, what I was catching also there is just that, yes, things have, have evolved over the years, but I mean, surrounding yourself with either good people, coaches, advisors, you know, software has probably helped that journey, I would imagine. Absolutely. Yeah. I guess that's one thing I find special in this industry is that for the most part, people are pretty open and willing to help, you know, whether it's, it doesn't always have to be a consultant. I think consultants have helped us a ton, but then also just events like you and I talked about last week in Vegas, you know, with the Aspire Conference, just being able to network with peers. I can think back on, you know, many seasons of our business where that having the ability to pick up the phone, call somebody that's been there, or call somebody, you know, whether that was in recent years for them or many years ago, people are open, right? People genuinely want to help businesses succeed. And, and I think that's valuable in our industry. And I think that the green industry is probably one of the best industries in my experience of just being able to open and share information compared to a lot of other businesses I've been around. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Agree. So we just talked offline about your know, part of helping with this journey and you, you, 
you're sharing that you had some tremendous growth uh, from over a period of 12 months, 2021, going from eight to 18. Is that, is that correct? That's correct. Yes, sir. <laughs> so that's, I mean, that's just mind blowing to me that you get that type of growth. I mean, people talk about, yeah, we'd love to strive to get 20%. And the fact that you're there are two and a half times that revenue, I mean, that, that doesn't come overnight. I mean, that doesn't just like, you just suddenly don't decide to hire a couple of salespeople and bring in that revenue. Just talk about, I suppose, how you prepare for that type of growth. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I mean, and you're right. I think that goes back to the vision, the dream, the planning process. So you came out of 2018, 2019 for us. You know, we were a good company, but I'd say we weren't great yet. And so, you know, part of our leadership is we we do try to grow our leaders and we try to help them realize, you know, opportunities to grow their personal life, their business life. And then, you know, how all that intersects together. And so I can remember, you know, one book that made a big difference was Jim Collins, Good to Great. So, you know, mm-hmm. right people, right seat. And so, you know, when we think about our growth in 2017, we had hired a new CFO who's currently still with us today, who had had a lot of experience and opportunity in a larger real estate company. So I was able to bring some of that finance background, but then I guess going into 2019, the CFO and at the time, two branch managers, which were basically our leadership team. And I got away for really what I would say was the first executive planning retreat where that we really, you know, drew out who do we want to be? What do we want to be? What's it want to look like? And, you know, for us, number one was culture. We're very much a people culture first company. And so, you know, our mission statement is actually face-based. It's, it actually says to, to use the opportunities God gives us in the business of grounds maintenance uh, to impact the lives of our employees, clients, and community. And so, you know, we are strategic about listing employees first, because without, without the group of people we work with, we can't service the customers in the community and be who we want to be. And so, you know, at that event, the company name was actually at that time, Al's Complete Lawn Care. And so we realized like, we want to be a regional player, but basically our name and our processes don't represent the business and the culture that we want to lead in the marketplace. And so, you know, at this event, number one was we wanted to to change the name and align the culture with the, the, the company that ultimately that we wanted to be. And so the values had always been the AFIX name, which if you look at our name, you know, that stands for accountability, professionalism, honesty, integrity, and excellence. So it's just the company's values that we've had forever that our CFO actually came up with that acronym for us. And so you take this planning meeting, we think about culture, we think about the name, we think about the processes. We also thought about the customers that we had, you know, right customers, not just employees, right? You know, you need, you need the right people, but you also need the right customers. I remember coming out of that, we had a customer in 18 that we did 1.9 million for, uh, we terminated that relationship. And so, you know, you think about a a seven, $8 million company that terminates a $1.9 million customer, like that's a a big decision. Yeah. And so it was because at the time using Aspire, realizing that, Hey, like the margins aren't here, the, the results that we want aren't here. And when we say the margins aren't here, that's not just about profitability at the end of the day. Yes. That drives profitability, but profitability drives the opportunity to create culture, right? So if we can buy safety equipment, invest in our employees, whether that be 401k, whether that be just general atmosphere things, the condition of our offices, the CapEx that we spend. And so, you know, we realized that we had to create the right environment, the right customer, the right mix, not just in portfolio, but in customer as we were moving forward. So you know, all this stuff came out of that, realizing that we needed to get some more of the right people, on the bus being that we had to hire some salespeople to replace some of the work. You know, we changed our comp plans. I think as companies grow, sometimes, especially younger businesses, they create opportunities for their employees because that's what they did. So they feel like that's the process of what the next guy has to do. So we really took time to figure out, well, let's not look at what we've done. Let's look at what we need to do, who we want to be, how this needs to work. And so we redid all of our comp plans across the board so that account management, sales management, production management, we're all pulling in the same direction. We created opportunities that were win-win. And then, you know, I know it's different in the industry. People have different opinions and approaches, but we do create commission-based comp plans, which as we had people begin to experience the opportunities of kind of those comp plans and to kind of taste some of that, it continues to drive future results over future years. And that's even been part of the sustainability of where we're at. And so, you take all these changes, 2018, 2019, and then a mix that we had some customers that wanted us to travel, but we had said, you know, I don't know that we're in a place where that management-wise, leadership-wise, we can do that without sacrificing 
who we are today. And so really just being strategic to say, hey, let's get the right people. Let's drive the right culture. And let's create the right environment via comp plans, benefits for all these guys. And then let's actually go out and let's uh, let's take some risk and take some opportunity. And so all that built up in 2020, 2021, we did go from about 8.7 million, 8.5 to a little over 18.7. It was a busy year. I'll tell you that. And that was all organic. There was not an acquisition in that growth. Um, wow. Okay. And yep. so Impressive. It, it, yeah. And so that, that actually took us from the Kentucky market to the Tennessee market. Um, and, and a lot of that was, was fueled through a couple of customers that continued. Basically, if we could do it, we could take the work primarily maintenance with a little bit of enhancement, you know, a few larger jobs in that same mix. It goes back though. It's the people, right? I mean, we had to do a lot for people in that time because uh, ultimately I couldn't run it all. And so I've got a great leadership team. They stepped up. A lot of guys maybe did things that, hey, they didn't have to do as an eight and a half million dollar company, but as an 18, they had to. Uh, and it created new roles and new opportunities and people from inside got promoted. Uh, and then from then we've been able to sustain what I would say more is that, you know, routine 20 to 30%, you know, so right. from there we went more to, to 23 million the next year and then pushing 30 million this year. Yeah, I mean, that's like a lot of fun. Uh, you know, the big takeaways I've got, I mean, I could go so many different directions here. You've just, you gave, I don't know, 10 different nuggets right there. So I hope people are listening. But, you know, a couple of them I, I want to pull out, you know, having the right people on the bus, and you know, that's huge right there. Having the right customer, you know, not being not being afraid to, you know, fire some customers that are not just not a good fit for you anymore. And then another nugget I pulled out, uh, was important was you know hiring somebody like a, a CFO that doesn't necessarily have to have industry experience you know they, they'll have business experience but they don't necessarily have to have landscape experience so those are great nuggets right there you know you go away you do your strategic planning which I think is you know super important this time of year or you know mid November right now and then you come back after you know spending maybe two or three days off site you've got this great plan you've spent a lot of time in it but then how do you then roll that out to your team members especially if you've got multiple branches because you've got some great messages there but you know if you've got you know two three hundred employees it's tough to get it down to all the field laborers T talk to me about that how you did that that's been fun to actually learn as as the years have evolved because you know if we started that in 19 in our company and there was four of us we leave in three weeks, we 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 continue to do it every year, and I think there's eight or nine that'll be at the strategic planning this year that we'd say are, are key leaders. But you know, we found that that people pay attention to what leadership drives, right? And then I've also found that you can't drive everything in one year. So you know, sometimes I think people leave for a strategic planning or consulting session and they build a list of twenty items and then they go and try to execute twenty items. It's it's almost impossible. So you know, for us, when we get away we debrief what the prior year was and we really talk about the good, the bad, the ugly. And then we go back and we start thinking about our, our mission and our vision and where we want to be in the next year. And as a company, we create two or three, really one driving goal, but then two or three overarching goals. Like, so for instance, one this year, one of the goals was entrepreneurial leadership at the branch manager level. And so a lot of things we've done in 23 have been focused on teaching the branch leaders about entrepreneurial leadership and ownership of a business. Because as you scale into a branch model, these people are almost mini CEOs, right? Like they're running for us, they're running their P&L, they're running their operations, they're controlling their safety, their sales, their production. And they've got to understand how that impacts the company, not just financially for themselves or for their team or for the business, but every aspect of it, because that's what they control. And so you know, we leave these these plannings with basically one, two, three company goals, depending on the year. And then we go back in the branches and we incentivize and we help the guys to create those several things within the branch that make a difference. And we actually, so come into January, we'll have meetings in the branch that talk about like what the year actually was. And usually the CFO and I attend all of these in every branch where that we look back with that branch now and we talk about hey, how was that prior year? We debrief it, the good, bad, the ugly, and the branch. And then along with that branch manager, we present what the 20, so for 24, we'll present in January what the 24 goals for the Apex company will be. And then we take time during that and we let each person within leadership, we kind of group them by account management, production management. We split them up into teams and we let them talk about what are the things that they do on a daily basis in and out throughout the whole year 
then make a difference to those company goals. And then we have them go create their own goals mm -hmm. for that strategic objective for the company. So if I'm an account manager and it's about entrepreneurial leadership, I'm going to go think about what things do I control and I drive that at the end of the day impact the company in that direction. And so we try to break it down into bite-sized pieces where everybody understands in their role how it impacts the company. Because, you know, I think sometimes people say, hey, well, we want to be more profitable. Well, great. Or we want to do more safety. Well, great. Or depending on their type of ownership structure, hey, we need to grow EBITDA, right? Well, like you have to break that down into things that matter for that person that's leading a division that they can touch, they can control. And at the end of the day, when you roll it all up, then hopefully you're driving in a forward direction. And that's just our approach to it. And then every month we continue. So whatever that strategic objective is, when we do our monthly financial review at every branch, there is some sort of segment of that presentation that goes back to the strategic planning, the goals, and then down to the goals for that individual person. Yeah, that's awesome. And that can only be done with the right people on the bus. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to have, yeah, you got to have people that understand where you want to go and hold themselves accountable, right? Like the right people need to be accountable. And because we don't micromanage, that's not really part of our vision, our culture. We allow people to be autonomous and, and do their thing. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's you're, you're seeing a lot the the language I used to have when I had my company that each of the branch managers, it was almost like their own little business, be entrepreneurial. But I think sometimes people, other companies struggle with what what does that look like i mean is that a formal training course but a lot of people may be good at what they've done you know whether they've been a good salesperson or account manager but not necessarily know how to run a business so how how do you provide that sort you know that um the resources to help them be successful at that that transition from a good you know am pm to a good entrepreneur. You either have to create that process yourself internally, or you have to get around people that can help you create it. So whether it's a, a group like you all that can come into a company and help create, I think there has to be a roadmap, right? And and you have to identify the skills that certain positions need and you identify how those comp plans look. And, you know, I guess part of what I realized in the early part of 2016, 17, 18 was that a, we had to get the right people on the bus, like you said, but then I, as the leader of the company, had to get out of the business and work on the business. Mm -hmm. And if there was either that meant I had to learn and grow and study as a leader in order to be able to support our team, or I needed to get out and bring in outside influence that could do the same thing. So it's definitely a planning and pro like it, it won't just happen without without effort, right? Not for sure. No, the, yeah, there's, there's so many things there. And um, I mean, it's great that you recognize that um, a lot of people... Yeah, grow into their position and just they don't necessarily learn more things. They don't learn how to take it the company to the next level. So the fact that you've recognized that, I think is tremendous. I think talk to me a little bit more about, you know, where where does the company go from here? Are you looking 50 million, 100 million? Talk to me about, you know, some of the employees and or, you know, leaders, where they see the company. Are they excited where the company is going what does the future look like? Yeah, no, absolutely. So it's uh it is exciting. And and part of our growth is not well, our growth has not been growth for the sake of growth. Like we want to be strategic in our growth. You know, for me personally, you know, you do get the question sometimes, hey, aren't you content? You could be content. And and you absolutely could be. I think everybody's personality is a little different. I feel like I want to make as big a difference as we can and in many, in many places. And so, you know, our vision right now is is Southeast. So we are trying to grow through acquisition in Kentucky, Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, kind of all these Southeast markets. And so it's been fun because our team is excited. And in the last 12 months or so, we've created some opportunities, some ownership opportunities for some of our team. We've created uh, some future uh, impacts financially that, that these guys can get. And so they're excited about that. And then we're creating opportunities within the current company for people to grow. So for instance, in the last six weeks, a branch manager that started in 2016 has now become a regional manager that is over all four branches and which ultimately as we scale is freeing up my time, but it's created an opportunity for him and his family. And at, at the time, a lot of our leadership, I would say is younger career minded. So uh, I think they're good. If uh, if we don't continue to create opportunities, then ultimately I wouldn't fault them to look elsewhere. So for me, I feel like there's an obligation that we have to continue to grow to create opportunities for these people. Wouldn't be fair for me if I don't. And so, you know, it's exciting right now. The team's excited. And uh, as far as the future, you know, we are 
you know, somewhere around 60 million is kind of the, the insight for where we want to <laughs> go. And in the next, we're trying to get there in the next two to three years. You know, I think we can, we can do it, but it's, you know, via acquisition. Right. 100 million is really the goal, but uh, if we can hit 60 in a couple of years. It'd be a good run. Yeah, that's a, that's a big number, 100 million. I mean, that must be exciting for you as well, because, you know, to see, you know, you've, you obviously went through the grind back in, you know, 2021, 2022, you know, with that big jump now being able to see some of your leaders develop into higher you know higher positions lead more people get excited about the future and you, you've probably got an, another set of excitement within you just being able to sort of see where this company is going and almost like look at the business from a thirty thousand foot level start having fun again and see how you can develop your team and how you develop your company as a whole. I mean, that's it must be it must be a good feeling. It is. I get excitement out of just seeing the impact in people's lives. So, you know, it is fun for me to be less operational and definitely more growth and vision oriented. You know, I spend most of my time with our growth and vision. So it's even, you know, in conversations at the current levels about where they want to go, what they want to do, and then looking into the acquisition side of, you know, is it a good partner? Because you know, I think we would all agree that just because there's an opportunity out there, it's funny, my wife actually says it, she's like, hey, just, you know, every opportunity is not your opportunity. So, you know, again, making sure that the people are right, the culture is right, you know, that's, we we really want to be strategic in our growth. And that part's fun for me. So I could tell you stories in the last year of, you know, an acquisition we made and the impact that it made on not just that owner, but his team. And, you know, we're actually having a, a gathering down there in a week. And, you know, I can look at his leadership team that was, about three when we went into the market and now it's seven and how much of that has been uh -huh. transitioned. And then a couple that have come in from the outside and the conversations they have about the culture and actually what we stand for. And it's just like, those things are fun, right? You know, it's a good part of business, but you know, that doesn't also go without the saying that the reality is that not every day is, is going to be upward. You know, there are, you know, every now and then you hit an air pocket and the plane drops, right? But at the end of the day, I think when you surround yourself with the right people, we go through it together and, and we'll continue to move forward. Yeah. And actually, we had a panel discussion last week at Aspire with uh, John Muni with Focal Point. And, you know, he kept over and over just talking about the culture piece. If you have that great culture, it help you with some of those challenges that come up. Because, you know, we, we all have challenges. But if you have a great culture, it help you overcome them pretty quickly. And you'll get together as a leadership team and that will help propel your growth in the future. So, you know, it, again, goes back to people, goes back to culture. I mean, that just, that's that thread that seems to go through a lot of businesses. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, I agree. I agree. So, Alan, any, uh, I mean, if people want to get in touch with you just to learn a little bit more uh, about, you know, your growth and just to learn a little bit more about you, what's the best way for them to connect with you i mean i'm always happy to talk to somebody so they can look me up on linkedin they can reach out send me an email i can send you all that contact information you can put it on the end of the podcast i'll put, give you my cell phone they can give me a call anytime i'm uh you know i think that's the great thing at the industry is that people are willing to share and, and we're the same way right yeah absolutely cool alan i know you're a busy guy thank you for your time today i i can't remember is somebody sharing so many nuggets there so I really hope my listeners are listening and taking pages of notes here. So uh, thank you very much, Alan. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for your time. Appreciate the opportunity. Okay, thank you, Alan. Cheers. Hopefully that was pure dead brilliant to you and you got some great takeaways for your business or your leadership role. This is Robert Clinkybeard, and I'd love to get you and your friends to join us in a future journey. So please subscribe to the various podcast channels or visit the commerciallandscaper.com or wilson360.com. Big thank you again to our partner Weathermatic and I really encourage you to reach out to them and see about irrigation solutions or partnership with them. Hopefully you have a pure dead brilliant day. Cheers everyone.